But it'll be a static photo, right? Mm -hmm. So, Gene, you should be able to. We are going live here from Phoenix, Arizona, where the temperature is really, really cold. It's getting down to the 30s tonight. That's right. Oh, my goodness. And it was like the high 50s today. Woo! I actually had to put a sweater on to get the mail from the mailbox. People are putting out frost cloth. <laughs> Which for us is an amazing thing. We may need to cover our banana trees. Uh-oh. Okay, we are checking. We're trying a new broadcast system tonight. It looks like it's working. Looks like we are live right now on Facebook. And looks like we are live right now on YouTube. And we're going to be live in the picture in about three minutes. And we're just about ready. But if you're online right now and you want to just leave a comment about where you're from and what the temperature is, where you are, we'd love to hear. And, and you know, if you're brave, share what condition your house is in. Because uh, it's like, you know, only a few days before Christmas. And I know in many rooms of our house, it looks like there's been an explosion, even though we're trying to keep that explosion under control. Who wrote so, in last year and said it looked like Christmas threw up all over their house? Yeah, because I put a post on Facebook and I said, what does your house look like? And somebody said, I have four kids, and it's been raining, so they're in the house. <laughs> oh, gosh. And the, 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 the floor has, like, got springs in it. They're bouncing off the walls. Uh, remember how we finally stopped doing advent calendars? Because they, <laughs> they, they could actually count down to Christmas, and they got so crazy <laughs> when they realized it was days away. I'm like, that's it. We're taking the advent calendars away. Because <laughs> I couldn't handle them bouncing off the walls leading up to Christmas. Oh, man. Good memories. Good memories. All right, do we have any comments? Anybody piping in? Tell us where you're from and what the weather is. And if you're from Australia or New Zealand, you're probably got temperatures like Arizona, probably even warmer than Arizona right now. Well, I don't see any right now, but I'm copying things, so give me a minute. Okay. Jean, what are you seeing over there on your screen? Any comments or anything? No comments yet. No comments. No comment. Do we have viewers? Yep. We got a few. Oh, don't be silent. There we go. <laughs> There's a few. Me, it's telling me chat is currently unavailable. We're excited. This is good. I've been wrapping my fingers to the bone the last couple of days. I'm just about done. And our tree looks beautiful with all the presents underneath it. And the cool thing is we didn't break the bank because I shop all year long and I find amazing deals on things. So we're okay financially. Our kids have been raised in a home where they realize that the thoughtfulness of the present is the most important thing, not the price tag of the present. Okay. And that's hard for some families. Here we go. Why don't you stand over here? Okay. We is are, it time? We're we going are live. Live and per in person. Hi, everybody. We're live from Phoenix, Arizona, where the temperature is 50 some degrees. And we are excited about Christmas. We're so excited we're bouncing off the walls. Yes. And this is Annette and. Santa, Steve. Steve from MoneySmartFamily.com. And tonight, we're going to talk about Christmas traditions and dipped pretzels. So if you are not a baker and you need something easy to throw together, look at this tray. This is amazing. Let's take it up here so they can it see. looks so classy, we'll so pretty. So and it, um, boy, 
Steve's got numbers for you. I do. But I just want you to know that I am what I eat. <laughs> and so I ate a dipped pretzel, so that makes me a dip. Oh, very funny. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, we didn't have pork butt tonight. Will you stop? Okay, so we're going to start with a couple of traditions that we do during the month of December. And what we'd like to hear from you guys is what are some of your favorite traditions that you've done in recent years? And then eventually we'll ask about some that you did when you were a kid, but just throw up some traditions because we want to we keep a catalog of it. We want to put them on our website because it's always an encouragement for other people to see what you've done and maybe get some ideas. Okay, now while you're talking about that, because you're going to talk about some traditions, I'm going to be melting the chocolate. You're going to be melting. So that's Is the that first all right? step. And we are so you can set that on top of those. We're preparing Very a gentle. video of how we made these dipped pretzels because they were amazing. Yes. So Christmas for us was always really started right after Thanksgiving. And Annette uh, sings in a chorus. And so it's right after Thanksgiving, she's doing all kinds of rehearsals. And getting ready for the the um, Messiah concerts. She mm -hmm. does a run with Messiah, and then she does a run with Holiday Pops. Actually, the other way around. Mm -hmm. Holiday Pops first, and then the Messiah. And in recent years, we've finally been able to go to those concerts, mm -hmm. and that is a highlight of the year. But for years, it was church musicals. Mm -hmm. And our daughter, one daughter did ballet for a while. Right. And so there was a ballet company here around town that did a Toys for Tots Thing. So if you brought a, two, a new toy, you could get in to see the Nutcracker for, uh, for, for, for the price of that toy. Right. And so it was amazing. Okay. But lots of churches do musical events. And so those have been traditions. Actually, we have one that we go to on Easter that always puts on this musical presentation. And it's amazing. And we take friends there for Christmas. Um, it's really Annette singing with the chorus that, that takes up a lot of time. So so music is, is big at Christmas. And actually, she starts playing Christmas songs. Well, I play them all year long. Well, she kind of, we have a, we have a player with, with five, room for five CDs in it. And so when Christmas is over, she leaves one Christmas CD in there. And then in June or July, she puts two in there. And then August 3, and then November... All five of them are Christmas. <laughs> okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, another thing we do, and I'm going to show you some pictures of this year, just one picture of this year, but we drive around for Annette's birthday. We get everybody together that can show up, and we go drive around and look at Christmas lights. And this last year, we introduced some friends from India to a U.S. Christmas, and we showed them. Oh, this is cool. This, they've never seen Christmas in the U.S. before, and so uh, Pankaj and Angira were, were with us, along with a bunch of other people, and this is in front of a house that uh, has a live nativity scene with live nativity live animals. Live nativity animals. So they have donkeys and cows and goats, and they have, um, they also had, this woman collects nativity scenes from all over the world, and she had some that were, you know, Two feet tall, some that were just a few inches tall. Uh, some that were just real like real tiny. Itty bitty. Yep. And they're just beautiful. So we're standing in front of her garage here, and and in the garage she had all these nativities. There must have been, I don't know, a hundred of them. Oh, easy. It was amazing. It was amazing. Um, one of the other things we do for Christmas is we watch movies. And we have a whole cabinet full of of our favorite Christmas movies. And so we're just going to share a few of them here, and I'll give you a link to We have a list of about 35 Christmas movies that are some of our favorites. From um, old black and white yes. to animated. Santa Claus. To just Santa Claus series is always, always One, good. two, and three. Right. And they did an excellent job with We those. actually thought number three was even really, better. Really good. I, I yeah. really like the, the message in number three. Um, this was Annette's family favorite from growing up in New York. Every Thanksgiving, they would broadcast March of the Wooden Soldiers. It was um, shot in 1934, Laurel and Hardy, and um, it's only 77 minutes long. At the time when they shot this movie, it was the shot, they had to create the largest set they'd ever created in Hollywood, and they ran out of lights. They had to borrow lights from all kinds of studios. But it's just, I, I think it's kind of 
<laughs> no, it's awesome. It's got it's like a mini operetta. So if you like music, oh the tenor in this movie, oh he's got a kick butt voice. So His I name just is Tom Tom. Oh, we gotta watch it. I'm just really hankering. Okay. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street. We watched the new version just recently, and it was okay, but the old version with Natalie Wood and Frederick Wynn is still one of our favorites, and so we watch that at least once a year. Christmas Carol with George C. Scott is probably our favorite version. There are a few other ones that are a little older, but George C. Scott does a, does a great job with that. And of course, last night, was it last night we watched The Grinch? Yes, it was. was. Last night we watched. No, no, no. Last night was White Christmas, which you oh, don't that's have here. right. The night before was the Grinch. That's and, right. And then there's always the best Christmas pageant ever. So I'm going to post a link while Annette catches you up on what we're doing. But these are our some just some of our Christmas favorites, and we just kind of watch one every few nights, and it gets us in the Christmas <laughs> spirit. And then sometime in the middle of summer, we'll throw a couple on just to yes. get us in. We don't have It's a Wonderful Life here. I know, we're missing we a lot. We a couple White times Christmas. a year. Okay, so let me bring you up to speed on what I'm doing. I am making dip pretzels. So if you don't think of yourself as a baker or a cooker, this is an excellent option for a very impressive thing. And Steve figured out that the bigger pretzels, we, we calculated the price of the pretzels and the price of the candy melts. And actually, I'm pretty sure I can do them for cheaper. The best price on the candy melts are... $1.79 they'll go on sale for, but I have gotten them even cheaper than that, like way cheaper than that after the holidays. And I've stored them in our freezer in a, in a, in a canvas bag, and so they're ready. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So basically, you want to start with melting chocolate. You can use um, chips, but chips are meant to stay as chips. So they're not going to be as easily able to be melted. They say you can add a tablespoon of shortening, I think, to a package of chips to get it to melt or a bowl. See, I haven't, I haven't played around with that, and I need to. But right now, I just fill a bowl with candy melts. Okay, honey, I'm going to need you to sprinkle and drizzle. Well, I'm not ready to sprinkle yet. I'm trying to All right, well, see where we are on YouTube. And I can't. Okay, I am going to. So I melted. I had some chunks of uh, chocolate. It's called chocolate candy coating. And it's like, it looks like it comes in ice cubes. And so I took four of those cubes, put them in a bowl, and then I put it in the microwave. And I set it for 30 seconds. And I, with the chocolate, I did it like twice. And I, and I had enough melted down. With these candy melts, it took three rotations of, of 30 each. So now I am going to dip pretzels. And I am going to need you, hon. Okay. So um, as soon as you can get here, I'm going to need you to do the, um, the sprinkles. Steve is going to do the 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 uh oh what do you call this it now drizzling. the drizzling and this? the sprinkles yes that's going to be the drizzle hold on let me get okay so here's the dipping so there is a real and, dip and if you're doing it by yourself me, let's switch sides. my friend said do it like one row at a time because i went over to a friend's house kim and we're making a different video for youtube this that kind not, of explains I need to um, thin this out a little bit. More. Okay, uh, hold on. Let me let me show you. I because let me just destroy it. No, let me let me let me let me have this. You try the sprinkles, okay? Because when you did when when we did the the thing, basically you just kind of go like this. It's not thin enough. It was, me. honey. It just came off the thing. I think this is thin enough. Well, that's, I mean, that's what we did when we did the, when Kim and I did the pretzels together. Sorry, we're having a little bit of a, you just put a little bit on the very tip and let it fall off the tip as you drizzle. You go back and forth with the drizzle. So, it's kind of how we did it. It looks classy. I was, I was editing the video. Definitely finished. Okay, well, you, you can't. You can't warm this more? The problem is. You can try, but okay, try. if you warm it more, then you run the risk of over overcooking. So I do it for 20 seconds. All right. 
All right, so here's the pretzels. I've melted the chocolate. Probably what would be best if we had room is to have like a heating pad. What do you call those, a hot pad where mm -hmm. you plug them in and they keep your, your dinners warm and you put the bowls on there to keep your chocolate warm. That would be probably the ideal situation. The bigger pretzels obviously are more expensive. I think Steve calculated. There's, um, when they're dipped, when they're dipped, they're about six and six a half cents each. each. And they look so pretty. Um, you saw the ones we showed at the beginning. And um, the little ones are bite size and they're easy to, to gulp down. And they cost, what did you figure on that? Two cents each? Two and each? a half cents each. Two cents each on those. Okay, so I'm almost out of my first four little cubes of chocolate, but I've got plenty more that I'm going to need to heat up in here. And we're just going to do one tray at a time. This is just an excellent thing. Obviously, you see it's easier if you have more than one person working this, for sure. So this would be good to do with a kid or a spouse or a mom or a friend. So one of our Christmas traditions is always baking stuff. And, right. And that will bake all the pumpkin bread which we have showed you how to do that right and um this sometimes year. she baked a lot of cookies with the kids right there um, were years you did that with your friend diane right okay need more chocolate squares let me show you what the chocolate squares look like and i'm going to heat that up here is the the candy and this again was given to me by somebody they were cleaning out a pantry, and they said, here you go. And I'm like, okay. And this was marked down to $1.57. They said it was originally $3.14. Um, so there's always ways to find deals on stuff so that you can do it even cheaper. Uh, the price that we're quoting you of $0.06 cents for the big ones and $0.03 cents for the small ones is actually a, a pretty average price. It's not even the cheapest price. And pretzels can be bought lots of different places. Um, I, I bought these big ones at Big Lots. Um, Kroger has them also. The little ones, pretty much everybody carries the little ones. But we were in Big Lots, and, and we were shopping for some other things, and I knew I was going to be doing these pretzels, and I said, let's get them. So we did. Let's take a break. All right. And oh, let's... Actually, I'm going to keep dipping while you talk about okay. traditions. Well, oh. No, 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 no. What? We're going, to, we're going to get some comments. Oh, comments. We've got yeah. people writing off. Okay, yeah, us. yeah. Let's, let's, let, all right, let's answer some questions. So, Jean, go ahead. Well, we got guess... our friend Jean over on the other computer, and she's going to. This might be repeating, but it might be repeating for somebody's benefit. You were talking about how long to melt candy. Mm -hmm. um, Stephanie was asking, what's the maximum time for melting without having it become gummy? Gummy? I don't know about gummy, but I know you can, like, actually, maybe that's her word for it. You can overcook your chocolate. We, so did, that's, that, we did that with some chips. chips white chips. It became kind of crumbly. Well, because we added milk at, yes. when we were doing it at Kim's house. But the instructions say that you're supposed to start melting it on half power in 30-second increments. And we tried that, and it just didn't work. So we do it on full, full power, power at 30 seconds a piece and just kind of work our way up to uh, getting it. Getting so, it uh, but you got to, after each 30 seconds, you, you need it. to take it out and stir it vigorously okay. because if only a certain part of it is, is warm, it'll start melting all of it. Okay, okay next so. question or comment. Um, well, this is actually a technical thing. Mm. I guess there have been some problems with uh oh. Uh oh. And what are they saying? Is it freezing? Well, somebody said YouTube is down. I'm looking at it and it keeps buffering. Okay. Um, we're just going to have to let it go and we'll figure it out later. Because <clears throat> I'm seeing it fine here. But anyway, okay, so we'll, we'll see what we Sorry, can do. Sorry, YouTube. YouTubers. We will figure this out. <laughs> this is our first time using the new broadcast network. And so I know there's going to be some kinks that we have to work out. So hang with us. Maybe just enjoy the audio and we'll, we'll figure this out at some point. Um, okay, so any, any more comments or questions, Jean? Anybody chiming in from all around giving temperatures or chill factors or? Oh, let me back up to earlier comments. Yeah. Um, oh, dear. 
Fitting's from Minnesota. That oh. was from Joanne. However, she did not talk temperature at all. Oh, I bet it's cold she there. She doesn't have to say anything. Lynn is from California, did. also says hello. Oh, hi. Virginia from Texas said hello. Hello. And Brenda from Ohio. Way Nine. back when we first started, we got greetings from... Um, and the computer's not helping me. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. Sandy in Southeast Texas, where it was 73 a little while ago. Wow. wow. That's so wow. it's going to drop 30 degrees by morning. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's warmer than here. So, okay. Oh, oh, and Stephanie in Rhode Island, 21 degrees icy rain. Woo! That's cold. That is cold. Okay, so I am dipping the pretzels and I will be bringing them to my extended family's gathering for Christmas Eve. Steve is going to be talking about that in a few minutes. And, um, and I will be, I'll be bringing two dishes. I'll be bringing a green bean dish that I haven't figured out yet. I think I'm just going to toss it with some butter and, and slivered almonds. And, um, and then um, I'm going to be one of the dessert people bringing these dipped pretzels. And whatever doesn't get eaten on Christmas Eve with my extended family will be eaten probably on Christmas Day when our kids come over and some of their friends. And if we eat all these on Christmas Day, we'll be sick. We're going to have some zip problems. Well, maybe we won't eat all of them, but we'll put a dent in them for sure. Okay, so you saw how easy that was. I did the cubes. The cubes are super, super easy um, to, um, oh gosh, to, to melt. And so are the candy melts. And I will tell you, you can pick up the candy melts for sure at Michael's Arts and Crafts, at Hobby Lobby, and at Joann's. And all of those places have coupons. So you should not have to pay full price. And if you really want to be clever, you bring in a couple of people with you and you use cash and you give each person, like you bring two or three people, you give each person uh, an online coupon and cash and then you can get um, everything at 40% three, or up. three bags of candy melts at at least 40%. Um, the other place, believe it or not, that has candy melts is Walmart. So if you're part of our Swag Bucks team and um, you have... Um, credit, you have cards at Walmart, you can pick up your candy melts and make the most impressive dessert ever um, for serving at your Christmas events and parties. Okay, more. it's time for more chocolate. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing great. Okay, All so right. Let's talk hey about... Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just toss out. Um, we've got a lot of lows. I'm just going to jump right to the one who gave us a temperature in Celsius. Nope. Oh. Um, Laura from Ontario. It's um, negative four Celsius. I don't, know how, I don't know how to convert, but I think that's in the teens. Wow, that's cold. Well, so, see, Celsius, that, 32 degrees is freezing here. That's zero Celsius. Yeah. So, so negative she's four. negative four. It's in the high 20s. Oh, high 20s. Not as bad as Okay. Okay, so okay. Here's, here's how far we got. Look at, look at those. I'm I think you can a be a job. little bit more generous on the sprinkles. I'm not doing such a good job with this. this what do you call this? Oh, you're doing it's, fine. It's, it's clumping. It's not coming out as thin as it did Here, before. I'm going to help you out for a I, minute. I can really do this. Okay. I have a handful. And you have a friend watching you from Luxembourg. She says hi. Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Wow. Right. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from Europe. Yes. Wow. wow, that's awesome. There are some cool things. Your sister Jen got on here, and she oh. said some of her traditions are putting up the tree after Thanksgiving, making pizzelles. Oh, that's right. And family baking days. Yes. So there's some there's some great comments in there. I really want to. I think we need to sample these. Oh, but the next step is these need to go in the freezer, don't they? Um, the refrigerator, at the very least. But we, we got to finish. Well, this one's ready. Okay. So we'll scoot this over. All right. Take this. I'm gonna put this in the back of the refrigerator. Okay. We'll put it in for how long? Oh gosh, I don't know, half hour. And I'll get another tray ready. And like I said, this is one of the most impressive desserts that you can bring someplace <clears throat> for Christmas. Mm -hmm. 
and it doesn't require turning on the oven or, or knowing how to bake and mix ingredients. It's just melting chocolate. Okay, one of our, now we're getting into Christmas Eve traditions. Okay. We talked about what we do before Christmas, that's music, musical events, right. uh, church musicals, driving around right. looking at Christmas lights, watching Christmas movies. But Christmas Eve is, it's kind of a crazy day. We, uh, it's, it's pretty much all work because one of the first things we do is we plan for the Christmas dinner that we're going to have. And so this year, uh, that's going to be cooking a turkey Christmas Eve day or the day before? Actually, well, don't confuse them with this year. Yeah. I'm thinking, talk about years past, then we'll bring it up to speed. But anyway, this year, this year we're, we're doing things a little differently a little this different. year. But we start off the day with um, me making a batch of crepes for um, Christmas for morning. Christmas morning, and they're really cheese blintzes. And we've got a video. I'll share the link with you for that. And it is one of our absolute favorites. As a matter of fact, it's so much of a favorite that our kids who now have moved out of the house all come back just for that. Because it's, yes, kinda, it's have, special. And, it's very special. And if they can't come for breakfast, they make us promise to save them some, which is going to be We have difficult. one actually coming at lunchtime this yes. year. <laughs> and she's like, save me some crepes. And we're like, we will. Yeah. So we'll put that recipe up, but that's one of our most popular recipes on our website, and we have a video to go with that. Um, we do a white elephant gift exchange um, with Annette's family. We and actually, family. that's that's changed over the years. Yes, it yes. used to be everything. You know, you name it, you can bring it and, um, and exchange it, but now... Um, it's evolved, and of course, the, the person who's hosting really gets to call the shots on that. Mm -hmm. And so my sister hosts Christmas Eve, and she has decided it's going to be an ornament exchange this year. So I've got our bags all, all ready and set to go, and, um, and that's what's going to happen this year. I have known people that have done um, consumables. They've said, bring something consumable, whether it's a candle or a food item or uh, paper okay. goods. Um, I knew another family that everybody brought music. Of course, everybody in the family needs to like the same kind of music. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Yankee, it, it, can, it can be called a white elephant gift exchange, a Yankee gift exchange. Um, and um, yeah, there's lots of different ways to do it. I knew one family that did, um, <clears throat> you're going to have to warm that up, I think. What did they do? Um, I talked about the consumables, talked about the music. They did books. One year, everybody brought a book to trade. So picking a theme. Yeah, picking a theme. Yep. That's another way you can do it. There's lots of different ways to do it. I like it where you just say it's got to be worth, you know, X amount in value mm -hmm. and be usable for somebody else. Not broken. No, not old socks. This doesn't, this is not an old sock kind of a thing. And not VHS tapes. No. You can't give those out. Right. <laughs> no VHS tapes, no cassettes. And, um, and then you just, um, yeah, you just have a trading war basically. And we do have rules about trading. We usually freeze the gift. On its third or fourth owner, but we'll we really should put that up on one of our pages. We we communicate that <laughs> at the start when people right. start trading. We let them know what the rules are. Right. And uh, <laughs> we did this once. A uh, company I was working for, I was in charge of planning the Christmas party, and we did a white elephant gift exchange, and we didn't put a limit on the number of times a gift could be traded. Oh my god! And the owner of the company put a paper bag in the gift exchange. With a hundred dollar bill in it. Oh my gosh! And it got traded to everybody and stolen yeah. so many times. <laughs> Craziness. One year we had we do a gift another gift exchange on uh, New Year's, and somebody brought a what was it a, a, a parrot? Oh, a light up parrot. Yeah, it was it was a that that sang that, that sang it sang. That thing was a hot commodity. <laughs> that was it was the most unique thing I've ever seen and. Yeah, that was crazy. It looked like something out of Disney. Um, like Dr. Doolittle or yeah, something. What's the what's the Polynesian? Um, oh, yeah. Where the birds sing. Let's all sing like the birdies yeah, sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was... These uh, look, you're getting the hang of it. These look great, no, honey. It's, it's, not as, it's not as nice Aww. as we did in the video. Well... But they're these, looking okay. <clears throat> these look so pretty! So that's so Christmas festive. Eve. Christmas Eve is... 
It is the white elephant gift exchange, making the crepes for Christmas Day. Right. And then one of the things Annette did, we did this years ago, and we held it in recent years, but with the extended family, there's usually about 30 of us. Right. And so what we did is we sang the 12 days of Christmas. No, we haven't <clears> done that recently. But how we did it was we had the 12 each, we had 12 pieces of paper. Right. And we let everybody draw a number. Actually, it depended on how many people were there. We had 12 12 days, right. but sometimes there were two on a number or right. three on a number. So everybody even. picked a number. And so sometimes there were two or three people singing the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. And we go around each group singing their number. That would be fun to do on Christmas, wouldn't it? <laughs> Maybe we do that this year. That would be awesome. And Annette, using her, her operatic voice, I always took five golden rings. Five golden I rings. got to be five golden rings. Right. So that was just a silly, silly, crazy thing we did in our in our family, and lots and lots of fun. And then there was the year that we did the Christmas Eve service, and the kids all fell asleep. <laughs> no, we're not telling that well, we story. We tell that story. No, we're not so, telling that story. So you'll have to tune in later <laughs> to find out why the kids fell asleep, <laughs> because Annette was at church singing the service, and Dad was left alone with them at Nan and Grandpa's house. And, and, and bad bad <laughs> things happen when Dad is supervising the kids mm -hmm. and they're with their Uncle Bill and we're not even going to go there. They're sampling cordials. <laughs> okay, what else? And what they else? Only, they each said they only had two servers. Oh, yeah, that's all. Repeatedly. Two, right. Two, okay, two. come on. <clears throat> well, that's it for Christmas Eve. That's it for Christmas Eve. That's okay, what Christmas about Eve. Christmas Day? Well, I gotta put these in the refrigerator. Oh, all right. You, did you show them? Did you give them a close up of those? I, I gave them a close This is very similar to the other bag. Aren't they pretty? Yeah, they they're almost Aren't they awesome? Those, Look, you guys, we're doing it right up. before your very eyes. This is not rocket science. You can do the, you can do this. And you can actually put these in a tin and give them as a gift. You can put them in little treat bags, although I don't, they're a little bit more stable with the chocolate on them. I probably would be inclined to put them in a, in a tin or some kind of, you know how they make those Christmas Tupperwares that you can buy at the store and then put a pretty bow or some ribbon around them. I think you should just put them in your mouth. Very funny. <clears throat> I know you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fact, so. I think I need to try one. Oh, uh, wait, what just, I do with this just hang on. Okay, we got to drizzle. drizzling on those? Yes, you're drizzling. Keep drizzling, keep drizzling. I want to do a different color because I think I think a different color will be thinner. Oh, uh, well, we got to finish that, though. Uh, we're not going oh, so you want to just start another bowl? Yeah, I want to start another bowl. And do some of the reds. Okay, that's fine. Because I want to use up the chocolate. So, okay, you guys, oh, hype just made a mess. Any of you guys have any questions about this? Do you have any more? There are a couple of questions. Okay, all right. So let's take a break, and Jean's going to field us questions. All right. Fire okay. away, Jean. Well, this this goes back, and it's on a slightly different subject. That's well, okay. Let's see if I can find her. Oh, now I can't find her. Um, forgive me for not. Laura. It's Laura wants to know if you have slow cooker recipes on your site. Oh, you know what? I do have some slow cooker recipes. Uh, my beef brisket is a slow cooker recipe, and it is delicious. And I have a French onion soup that I have made in my slow cooker. That is amazing. Um, she, should, she should go to moneysmartfamily.com right. slash recipes. Yes. And on the recipe page, you can go to the beef recipes where the beef brisket will be. Right, beef chunk recipes. And then the... the um, French onion soup will be on my vegetarian page. And um, I'm trying to think. I also usually cook my corned beef in the crock pot. And then I make Rubens out of my corned beef. I buy extras of them when they are. you got to keep going because they're going to get um, solidified. Sorry, doing too many things at once. Um, the uh, corned beef... Um, is um on sale on sale at St. Patrick's Day, which will be coming up before you know it. So I buy extra ones and then I cook them in the crock pot and overnight. And then that morning I put them in a Tupperware to chill them. Then I slice them and make Reuben sandwiches. And our kids have absolutely loved that. Absolutely love that. Okay, so Jean, 
Yes. Go ahead and field a few more well, questions. Well, actually, we have a, um, a little a tip and okay. a request. All right, um, go for both it. Both are from Cindy. Okay. Um, Cindy pointed out that she loves to drizzle white chocolate on puffed cheese corn. Oh, my gosh. Never she heard of that. She also, same person, would like you to give a demonstration of singing Five Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm just reading it off the. Oh, list. that's so cute. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we'll go live on Christmas. <laughs> well, you can give them a gentle, don't blow your voice out, five golden rings. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yep. Well, yep. while you're thinking it over, I can also say that there was someone who greeted you. Let's see. Eileen in New York says Merry Christmas. Hi, Eileen. Merry Christmas. I don't know. Is it Eileen Rooney Russell? Was it Eileen Rooney Russell? Because if so, that's my cousin. She's related to you. She admits to being your cousin. Yeah. Oh, hi, cousin um, Eileen. Eileen. <laughs> Eileen from Ohio says Merry Christmas. And Christina from Melbourne, Australia says Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of you. What a great time of year. Don't y'all wish... I wish that this season could last for eight weeks because I cannot possibly do everything that I want to do. Can I jump in there? Uh, yeah. Did you put all the, all the red ones in there? No, I just put oh. small ones. Okay, so I have, this is awesome. These are, the thing that is so awesome about these pretzels is that you've got the salty stuff with the pretzels and then you've got the sweet with the chocolate. So it's sweet and salty and it's just really, really good. It's kind of like you and me. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, way, Jean, do we have any comment? other? No, Lauren, I just seemed timely to say this. Lauren said that you were a great example of working together. Oh, thanks, yeah. Lauren. Um, we are not we are not perfect people, and we have our differences that we have to work <laughs> through. So please just don't, a few. Just don't, don't think that this is life all the time for us. It's not. We're, we're real just like all the rest of you, but we do like sharing our tips and our tricks. Okay. Okay, here comes the red. Can that be seen on camera? Can the red drizzle be seen? Are you seeing that? No, but I'm a little behind you. Okay. What I'm looking at is behind you. All right. That's much nice. Well, these are melts too, so I don't understand. Yes, that's because that has the um, little speckles in it. Oh. I think it makes sense. And it's also possible that the white has different ingredients in it. That doesn't allow it to thin out as much as the red. All right. Is. Perhaps. Oh, these are so pretty. It's the most critical time. <laughs> so, so what? What is six in Twelve Days of Christmas? I'll sing six. Um, geese laying. Six geese laying. Six geese lays and seven maids a milking. Yes. Well, we're going backwards. Going six no, geese somewhere laying. there's swans. Seven S swans are swimming, swimming. Six, six geese are laying, five. <laughs> Your voice is more rapid. It is not possible to say you have to sing things. Four calling birds, three, three French hens, two turtle, turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> There you go. You heard it here first. Oh, brother. Somebody told me that I should be on the radio. That way, at least they could turn me off. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay. How are we doing on time? How are we, we are doing? at 7.30. We're good. So Sorry. somebody said they were wrapping presents while they were watching. I'm just wondering uh, how they're doing. And what else is going on over here, Jean? Um, if I can't find her name, but somebody... Beverly made a comment before that since there have been some changes in her family dynamic, she needs new Christmas traditions. Oh, so I, that's yeah. a, definitely. Know, yeah. I, I think I think you guys are kind of helping to inspire that. Yeah, you yes. know, it's it's hard when you have a death around Christmas or or any time any the kind of loss year. around Christmas. It really does kind of make you want to have to change the the tradition. And I mean, we're going through that just with having being empty nesters. Yes. It's, it's, we're really yes. kind of feeling our way through the dark, trying to go, how do we relate to our adult kids? How do we not, we don't want to force them into anything. We don't want to make them feel guilty like they have to participate. Right. And what, you know what, there's so much to choose from during the holiday season that you should have a lot of hope that if you just kind of stick your neck out there and try some things, you're going to find something new that will work. And you, you tried know, something new this last week. 
I tried something you new this did. last week. You did. Remind because me. There was a singing group that went to the hospital. Oh, yes. Yes. And that was cool. It was cool. Um, yes. There, at St. Joseph's Hospital, there was a, a ragtag tag group of singers from all around the valley and churches that showed up and sight read some really nice Christmas music. And... Um, and it was, this is the top I wore. It was a black velvet skirt, long skirt and a white top. And, and that was a new thing that we tried this year. And it was, oh, it was very, very so you were, rewarding. You were piped into 550. 570 rooms. And then, of course, this particular hospital has, I'm going to have to switch with you again. This particular hospital has a neonatal intensive care unit. So I think they said there were 170 infants in the hospital celebrating on this, their first Christmas right. listening to you guys sing. But I mean supposedly we even have a museum out here that has a Christmas tree um uh exhibit and I, I never get to that and that would be something I've always talked about doing. Um you know you could go Christmas caroling in your neighborhood. Um there's so many things to see. You could make a gingerbread house. So we go and ahead. and it used to be that if you wanted to make a gingerbread house like, you had to have a mold and create the gingerbread house from scratch. Well, now, at almost every store you walk into, especially things like Big Lots and, and Michael's and Hobby Lobby, even Kmart and I'm sure Target and Walmart, they all have kits. So basically, all of it's basic done for you. You just pop everything out and put it together. And... Um, but if you don't like gingerbread, you could do it with graham crackers. Oh, you could, or, or could you do could do it with, with pretzels. pretzels. They've even done no. it with pretzels. They've made log, log cabins pretzels. out of pretzels. So there's so many great traditions that you can do every year, honey. That you're getting a, drizzles that everywhere. That was a tradition that your mom started with us kids, <laughs> that we would go and do um, Once a year, houses. yes. Actually, I'll put up, uh, we have an article we wrote on, uh, I think it's seven different Christmas traditions that we Right. Done. And I'll put a link up to that. Um, you can even make ornaments. Like we have a recipe for dough ornaments on our website where as a family you can make ornaments. I've seen ornaments made out of blue jean. I've seen stars cut out of blue jean fabric. You can, if you have felt in the house, you can make ornaments easily out of felt. You can do stars. You can do bells. You can do, um, uh, gosh, think about the shapes of Christmas and and trees and you can do all of that so yeah there's a there is a plethora of ideas to choose from when you want to make um new traditions I okay just, i just saw a comment what? somebody wrote on youtube that um their so daughter and son in law take their llamas and ride them in a christmas parade They're awesome christmas that is awesome <laughs> I mean, we even have a park out here called McCormick Ranch Railroad Park where they literally decorate the park for Christmas and you can ride the train through tunnels and all around the park at night and it's just lit up for Christmas and it's so awesome. And they have a Santa there and visiting the park. And, um, you know, there's another thing that like in here in the Valley, zoo lights, the whole zoo has a, is lit up with lights for Christmas. So and it's, the botanical garden does that. Yeah, they have a and luminaria then, evening. There. It's endless what you can do. And then there are do. some resorts and shopping centers that have exhibits. Uh, yeah, they have exhibits or one resort. The the princess now charges, but they used to have a skating rink in Arizona. A train uh, that rides around the train, property. Now they charge like twenty dollars a carload, which we aren't going to pay. But right. Um, but there's lots to do. There so is let's, lots. Let's switch gears and let's talk about our Christmas morning tradition. Okay, but let's hold on. Let's take a break. Jean, do we have any comments well, or questions? There is a question that I regret I missed because I wasn't able to get questions off of YouTube. Like That's that. okay. But um, Andrea asked a while back if what you're doing right now made in a gluten free version. I'm sure if you find gluten free pretzels, you could certainly do that. Or you could make your own pretzels. Um, it's a little more work. Yeah, I'm sure if you could come up with a gluten-free substitute for dipping, I mean, this chocolate would taste good even on crackers is of this, some does sort. Does this chocolate have gluten in it? I don't think the chocolate does. So I think it's just only the pretzels. Yeah. So you need to come up with an alternative to pretzels. And I'm sure you could do it gluten-free. Okay. 
Are we keeping up with comments all right? Okay, Gluten-free tends to I be getting more right. and more easy to accomplish because there are more and more people producing those yes, kinds of products. Yes, yes, absolutely. And new kinds of flours, I mean the rice flour, the, the um, oh gosh, what did we see? Not the kidney flour, there's some new flour we saw recently. I've seen almond flour yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. So there's got to be something that you can dip the chocolate in that's gluten-free. Okay, let's talk about Christmas morning. Now, obviously, when our kids were little, we did it a certain way. And now that our kids are older, it, it's, an, it's an evolution thing. It, it evolves over time and it changes. And you've got to be flexible. I no longer do Christmas stockings at this point um, because the family is too big. And I'm not going to stuff all the stockings. It's enough for me to come up with all the presents and I I do wonderful I have a ball with all the presents but that's we enough. We did buy too many presents. No, no. Uh, no, no, we did fine and we're well within our budget. Well, budget I'm not concerned about budget. I'm just thinking that you've been wrapping presents for 3 days. Yes. And, and our family's not, growing here. We don't need to buy each kid 10 presents. They they don't have 10 presents. <laughs> each each kid has 7 boxes to open. And sometimes it's very little things. Okay, so. So Christmas morning, what we would do is Annette and I wouldn't go to bed very early on Christmas Eve. Eve because we would have been out at the family Christmas Eve And party. then we had final things to, to finish. We had the stockings and we filled the stockings with candy that Annette picked up around Halloween yes. on sale. And so we'd fill the stockings. And then we'd always have one present for each kid that didn't get wrapped. And it was their big present, we called it. And that was brought out on uh, Christmas Eve night, or actually Christmas morning about midnight. And we set all that up, and then we'd fall into bed. Well, and, and because some of the kids would get up at the crack of dawn, mm -hmm. we had a rule. And the rule at our house was, um, you can open your stocking. If you're up early, that's fine. But you can't open your presents till everybody's up. So just open your stocking, enjoy your stocking. And they always had things like gum and some school supplies that I would buy when school supplies were on sale. So maybe it was highlighters and fancy pencils and and uh, colored pencils or mechanical pencils or well, whatever. Fancy pretzels that need to be tasted. Yes, it, a lot of different candy you treats. Do you need to taste this? Do you need to taste well, that? It's, it's cold. Is it cold? Mm. How is it? Mm. Is it that good? Is delicious. Delicious, mm. huh? Mmm. <laughs> As Tim Allen would say, that is superior nutrition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> superior nutrition. Superior. Oh mm. my gosh. By the huh? way, there's a comment from Brenda. She said that she has done something like this with gluten free pretzels and it was good. Oh, yay! Mm. Not as good as this. Awesome. <laughs> Oh my this god! Very good. I like the little ones better. Yeah, the little ones are, mm. but the big ones look really fancy. That's what I like about them is they look, so, they look fancy. The pretzel itself, the big pretzel itself is about five cents. They come in packages with about forty-five pretzels in them, and then we calculated using three packages of candy melts that we got for less than a dollar, but we used a dollar as the figure. And when we did this for the video we're going to put up on YouTube, we were able to do about 300 pretzels with three packages of candy melts. So that was 300 pretzels for $3 of candy melts plus the cost of the pretzel. So that's where we came up with the figure. The small pretzels cost about 2.2 cents, and the large pretzels cost about 6.5 cents each. So if you figure you've given 10 of these big pretzels to somebody in a little cellophane bag, you're talking about less than a dollar. So a very impressive looking. Yes. Yeah. All right. Did we finish our traditions? No. Okay, let's finish those and then we'll no. wrap up the show. We talked about the, the stockings. Oops. We stay in our pajamas all day on Christmas Day. This is when the kids were little. <laughs> we're not doing that now. No, we're not doing that to this year. <laughs> nice called, try. We called it a jammy day. <laughs> And we played board games and we watched movies. Everybody got movies every year. And so, you know, we'd all take turns picking a movie. So we'd watch lots of movies on Christmas Day. And the saddest thing is the kids have grown and left the house is they've taken their movies with them. So we had to have been replenishing 
movies in recent years. Um, we divide the presents up. We wrap each child's present in a different color wrapping paper, so it's easy to tell who we got what. Yes, and now it's by family. And then so we each... divide them into a pile. Each kid, even now, as they're grown, they have their place in the living room where they sit with their pile. It's and so, so that's kind of funny. cute. And then I, I pull out the biggest trash bag we have, and I set it in the middle of the room. <laughs> and as the kids unwrap stuff, they crumple the paper, and they throw it by, like basketball into the bag. Um, and we always save the boxes. Yes. And we showed you last week how we have two box piles in our house, one for big boxes that are just cardboard corrugated, and then we keep gift boxes in a separate place, and we consolidate that pile Christmas afternoon and put everything away so it's ready for next year and just stored real nice and neat. We eat Christmas crepes around 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, we watch movies. We play board games. And this year, we're having a bunch of people over mm -hmm. for dinner, and it's going to be turkey dinner, but we're going to cook the turkey in advance. So yes. that doesn't have to spend the whole day in the kitchen cooking on Christmas Day. Right. And that's our Christmas traditions. It is. And that's And incredible. they change. They change over time. They change... Depending on the age of our kids, they change depending on who we have over. So be flexible. Um, definitely hold things loosely, especially as your kids grow up. And look for new traditions to add. Um, it, you know, there's nothing sacred on, on traditions. So definitely it'll, it'll go better for your kids if, if, if you try some new things every now and then. All well, right. I think, I think that's about it. So from our home to yours, yes. we hope you have a, a wonderful very Christmas. very Merry Christmas. And, um, and uh, just enjoy family and friends, and don't stress if the house is messy. Yeah, it's going to be okay. You're going to get through Christmas. And next week, because we have an epic New Year's Eve party every year, next week we're going to show you how to make Spanakopita. It's a Greek appetizer and hors d'oeuvre and that's what we're going to be doing next and, week and we're going to do Becky. the whole show in charades no we are because charades are our favorite game to play on new year's <laughs> no Eve. we are so not it's going to be sounds like <laughs> two syllables no never mind never mind <laughs> but we may throw in something else next week but it's going to be earlier in the day becky and nolan are going to be here helping us mm -hmm. we're going to show how we do it as a as a little assembly line production and we'll figure out what else we're going to talk about probably the what we do for new year's how we mm -hmm. how we run our new year's eve party which just, is so much fun just think how would you act out spiny copita <laughs> spiny pop yeah, you have to stop. think about that okay we'll so this week. is Annette and that's Steve Economitis from moneysmartfamily.com and we'll see you next time bye bye hey you're still on don't go anywhere keep smiling <laughs> Okay, yes, stop the